Hey everyone, welcome back with a new lecture in ISO IEC 1725-2017 edition. And now is introduction to ISO. This document contains some requirements from laboratories to enable them to ensure that they are competent enough to perform their lab activities according to this document, according to international guidelines, according to customer requirement, according to regulatory authorities requirement, accreditation requirement, and they can generate or get a valid results within acceptable range. And also require the lab to plan and implement actions to address risks and opportunities. Risks and opportunities is a very important clause added to this edition. Actions to address risks and opportunities, clause number eight, five. The lab is required to address all risks that may have a negative effect on lab activities or results or uh, documented information, organization responsibilities or any other point inside the lab and try to eliminate or reduce these negative effects or these risks to achieve improving in the results and increase the effectiveness of management system. And also they shall address all opportunities that may have a positive effect that can improve the results and increase the effectiveness of management system and try to use these opportunities to improve the quality management system. So risks and opportunities to achieve improved results and to prevent any negative effects on the results or lab activities and so if you achieve improved results and in prevent any negative effect on your lab activities or, or results so you will increase the effectiveness of management system and here is some verbal forms in this document shall indicates a requirement it must be you have to do this you shall prepare a procedure so you don't have any other option you will prepare this procedure should indicates recommendation it's advice if you did this it will improve something so you should do this may indicates permission you are allowed to do this and if you do this it will improve but if you didn't do nothing will happen so you are allowed to do this can indicates possibility or capability you can do this you are allowed to do this and if you did this it will improve something so this is it's better for you to do this requirement and structure of this document in 2005 edition divided only into two parts management requirement and technical requirements but in 2017 edition there are more details and divided into more parts general requirement structural requirement resources requirement process requirement and management system requirement but the main changes compared to the previous edition or the most important point added to this edition risk based thinking or risk based approach and that will be explained in details in clause number 85 actions to address risks and opportunities this is a new applied to this edition and covers all activities inside the lab you shall evaluate all activities inside the lab and for each lab activity you will try to find out what is the risk that will affect on this lab activity and try to eliminate or reduce this risk and actually this is a very important point added to this edition if you find out any risk that will affect on each lab activity and try to eliminate this risk or did corrective action to remove this risk so after that you will improve the results and you will increase the effectiveness of management system and even after you will build your system after one or 
two or three years, if you find out any risk after that, you will raise this as a non-conformity and you will make corrective action. So you will solve this problem and it will not happen again. And by evaluation, the risk on each lab activity that will enable reduction in prescriptive requirement, reduction in the documents that will be used inside the lab and replaced more by performance-based and that means in 2005 edition there are some requirements from the lab they have to do and also how to do there are specific provisions for implementation how to implement this inside the lab but in 2017 edition there are also some requirements from the lab they have to do but how to do is left to the lab based on their risk evaluation based on their performance if they find risk they will do if they didn't find risk they can do or not as example for this there are some requirements in this edition not written directly like it was in 2005 edition such as job description job description it's not written directly here but requirement to describe the jobs for each employee is there so you have to do but how to do is left to the lab so there is a flexibility in requirements in this edition and that will reduce the documents used inside the lab and another point added to this edition the definition of laboratory laboratory now is defined as an organization that can perform testing calibration and or sampling so if the lab is responsible for sampling process they shall apply all requirements of this document for testing calibration and also on sampling you will calculate measurement uncertainty for testing for your methods and also for sampling you will make validation you make everything for testing calibration and also for sampling but if the lab is not responsible for sampling in this case they will not apply requirement for this document on sampling but in the final report they shall mention that the lab is not responsible for sampling and analysis based on the sample received by the customer another point added also to this edition which is very important decision rule and that will be explained in details in the next lecture inshallah and in different points in process requirements the last point in this lecture which is scope of this document or for whom this document is applicable this document is applicable for laboratories that can perform testing calibration and sampling and specify some requirements from laboratories relating competence impartiality and other operations or lab activities inside the lab to enable them to ensure their competency to ensure that they are competent enough to perform their lab activities according to this document and other international guidelines and they can get a valid results within acceptable range and also this document is applicable for lab customers regulatory authorities organizations and accreditation bodies these they can use the this document to ensure the lab competency to confirm that the lab is meeting or can meet the requirement of this document and to ensure the competency of this lab that was the end of our lecture for today see you in the next lecture